Hey guys, how are ya? Can you hear me? Uh, Kampala, Uganda. Ah, very cool. Cheers, welcome to the stream. Hey Kevin, how are ya? Hope everything is well with you. Good stuff. So, uh, for those who are on, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, can you hear me? Let me know. Uh, I assume so, but we shall find out soon enough. Uh, can you hear me? All right. Hey Amen. I'm good. I'm good, Mike. How are you? How are you? Hope everything is well with you guys. Let me know if you can hear me. Uh, uh, much appreciated, Mr. Tr Mr. Brown. Uh, yeah, so people are slowly getting on. Good, good. All right, cool. Welcome to the stream. Give it a thumbs up. So, uh, yeah, I hope everything's cool. Loud and clear. Good evening, good evening. I can hear good, good. Greetings from Texas, New Jersey. Uh, thank you, thank you, Kevin. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, good evening, good evening, everybody. I hope everybody is well. Yeah, so I figured, uh, I guess tomorrow's Halloween, right? Anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't trick or treat anymore. So, um, yeah, Ruby Ruby, yeah. Everything's very good. I hope everything's good with you guys. Uh, from the Netherlands, ah, very good. Hey, Rob, how are you? Cheers, everybody. Hope, every, hope everybody is well. Um, so let me jump into the subject at hand, and then we'll do our Q&A. So I, uh, somebody sent me these questions, and I thought they were pretty good. So I figure I'll cover them here. And uh, yeah, let me just get into it. Boom. All right, here we go. So in purple uh, are the questions. I know what freelancer, I know that, I think you meant to write that. I know that freelancers make a lot of money, but my feeling is that many people are choosing the freelance, the freelancing because they, they don't, can't get so easy to big global company. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so he's asking, um, are people getting into freelancing because they can't get into big companies? No. From my experience, uh, most people get into freelancing is because they like that lifestyle. When you're a freelancer, you know, underlying free in freelance, you have freedom. You're free to, to work when you want to work. You're free with time as you develop your, uh, your skills and your, uh, your reputation. You're free to choose what kind of jobs you want to work with, what clients you want to work with. So freelancing literally means free. But at the same time, when you first get into freelancing, you could free fall. <laughs> you know, you have to uh, expect there's going to be a, a lag time. There's going to be a little bit of difficulty in early stages before you land your steady clients. That being said, that being said, um, it really depends on you and your skill sets. If you are an outgoing person, you can speak well, you can communicate well, then you're an ideal candidate for freelancing. If you're more introverted, you're not good at working with other people or reaching out to other people, you're afraid of uh, sales and so forth, then you probably don't want to freelance. Anyway, let me go to question number two. Would you give advice to somebody who has already a corporate job, good company and salary, and university degree to stay in this role, maybe only changing the company from time to not from time to time. Or do you think that in any case, somebody with good programming skills uh, working on that uh, should be a freelancer or have an own company? Ah, again, that is a personal choice. I know people. So let me summarize. He's asking. I'm I'm in a job. I got a good job, good pay. I got a degree. Uh, should I stay in the corporate world, maybe switch from one corporation to the next, which, by the way, is very common for people to go up in the ranks by switching from company A to B to C and so on. Um, or if they have skills, should you go into freelance or should you start your own company? Again, that's a personality thing. That's a personality. There's a whole different lifestyle involved with uh, the freelance world, especially 
If you have your own business, you start your own software as a service business. It's a whole different game. So in a nutshell, and there's many, I could go on a whole video about this, but I'll just briefly talk about the differences. When you work for a large corporation, it's typically a more stable situation, more stable work. You're probably going to be doing one set of job tasks for a while. Whereas if you're freelance, you're going to find yourself jumping from tech A to B to C. Um, you may have tons of work for three months and then no work for two months. So it's, it's much more chaotic freelancing. And when you start your own business, assuming a software-based business, that might be years where you're struggling, not making any money, barely making any, uh, barely making uh, your ends meet, barely paying your bills until you finally have success. So it's a personality choice, whether you stay with a large corporation or whether you go the freelance route. The other thing is that when you are working for a large corporation, uh, the the, the pay is steady and it could rank up and ramp up quickly but the pay is steady so you have to plan out long term in terms of your investment cycle and retirement all that kind of stuff because there's going to be no probably there's going to be no big spikes in income whereas with freelancing and especially if you start your own SaaS business it could be you're making this much this much and all of a sudden whoosh, you're making this much so it's a much more volatile circumstance uh, it's riskier uh, when you start your own business, but the rewards could be much greater as well. All right, so let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. Um, which programming language and skills should I learn by side of Python to make good progress in a career in my field? Or would you say that even doing web design as employed programmer in a company can have a competitive salary like data science or automation? All right. Um, the more you learn, generally speaking, the more you earn. So the more you can up your skills, the better off you are. But once you get your foot in the door and you start working, it's very important that you start working. Um, then you, you're going to let the market dictate what skills you will learn from there. Not YouTubers, uh, not articles and magazines. The jobs will dictate what skills. You may find yourself going into AI, you may find yourself doing full stack, you may find yourself doing front end re react, who knows, right? Um, the market will dictate that. That being said, your salary is not gonna be so much dependent on what stack or what type of development that you do. That you do. It will have much more to do with how good you are, how well you perform. So whether you're doing data science or automation, full stack, front end, your compensation will be more impacted by your overall skills and ability than anything else. Uh, so, you know, if you look at the rate of compensation, the salaries that people get based on the type of programming that they do, it all kind of, it levels off quite a bit within the third or fourth year. So initially, the data scientist may make more, but that's after years of going to school as a data scientist. I've done videos on this. But uh, after three to four years, the experienced full stack developer in JavaScript will be making as much as an example. All right, let's go on. Um, I'm looking for an opportunity. This is the last paragraph down here. I'm looking for an opportunity to earn extra money. If someone like me is working 40 hours a week and needs some time to rest, what is your advice? Uh, uh, well, let me finish this question, then I'll get into that. I think the, mark, the market is rare for data science freelancers. That's true. You're not going to see too many data science freelancers. Or maybe something like data cleaning and preparation should be possible if somebody is already fully employed. Maybe it would make sense if I can make extra money in web design while working full employed in my current jo my dream job. Yeah, you're not going to... I really doubt data scientists are going to find freelance gigs doing data science, but web design, uh, e-commerce development, uh, setting up people's social marketing, uh, social network marketing, all these kind of things are things that you would likely see on the side in freelance. So what you do is you don't want to burn yourself, so you may start taking on little contracts where you're doing five hours extra a week, uh, 10 hours extra a week, 
Um, the most successful people, by the way, are doing you know, 60, 70, 80 hours a week easy. So understand that. So if you're able to, uh, if you're younger, if you got the energy, you can put in those extra 20, 30 hours, 40 hours a week for a few years and, and make a lot of extra money and invest it or something, then you'd be way ahead. So there you go. Uh, so I, I, I wrote, uh, yes, data science is not a, a freelance panacea. Uh, some side gigs in web development. Become a superstar at work and get salary raises. That's one way to raise your salary. Become a superstar at work and maybe move to another company with uh, another company in time with higher pay. If you become a key player in a company, you can make big money. Yeah, that's true. One thing I've noticed with my friends, because I'm not corporate, but with my friends who are in corporate, they actually raise their salaries by switching from company A to B. Very common. And then company B to C, then sometimes back to A. Uh, it's weird that way. In some corporate environments, they, may j they just don't have the positions on top of your role, right? So you may be whatever making, well, say for the sake of argument, 100 grand, but they may not have the, uh, the tech lead positions available to you. In, it's just because they just don't have the space. So you may have to go to another company to find a tech lead job, as an example. All right, that covers that. Wow, all right, I hope that helps. So let's go back to live. We're live. All right, so I covered that, that in the first 11 minutes. That's good. If you like this subject, give me the thumbs up. If you don't like my haircut, give me two thumbs down, two. All right, so um, I'll start answering some questions. Let me get into it here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I'm going to scroll back up. Hold on. Okay. Loud and clear. Pas uh, beaucoup. J'ai coupé mes cheveux. C'est tout. Michel. Hello. Good evening. What do you think of Lisp? Is it worth learning? If there's jobs, I don't know. How many jobs have you found in Lisp? I, I've not programmed in it, so I don't have a technical opinion about that language. Uh, hey, Kentucky, Iran, very good. Good morning, good morning. Um, right in the middle of my 20 minutes of coding. <laughs> Cheers. Good, good. London calling, good. Hello, hello. Hey, good, hey, good song, good album. I uh, just got my first job. I'm feeling out of my depth. Any tips? Yeah, don't worry. When you start your first job, everybody feels uh, a little bit overwhelmed. Just take it day by day. Uh, you know, ask questions, not too many, but ask questions. Hey, what should I do here? You know, first week, it's expected that when you're first starting that you're going to uh, be a little confused, but so be a, don't be afraid to ask questions, and don't worry. Everybody starts off a little slow at first. All right, what's going on here? Uh, hey, I have questions. Should I learn React Native or Swift and Xcode? Thanks. Ooh. Just look at the job opportunities, man. What are the job opportunities? Now let me adjust this camera. Uh, all right, there we go. It's all about the jobs, you know? If you have jobs in React, and learn React. If there's jobs in Swift and Xcode in your area, learn that. Uh, is jQuery important to learn in 2021? No, it is not important to learn. If something comes up, learn it. But uh, I wouldn't be running out there trying to learn jQuery. It's kind of lost most of its mojo. Hey, Reynold, how are you? How did you, sh how did you choose your career path as a developer? Uh, based on demand in the market. Based on demand in the market. I saw where the demand was. And uh, back in those days, I started doing this in the 90s, things were changing very rapidly. The technology could change a lot within just a year or so. So there's always new things to get into. Uh, that curve has flattened out quite a bit in the last uh, 10 years, I would argue, uh, for the most part. But So it was based on the market. Uh, happy Saturday. You too. Hey. Uh, 
Hey, Stefan, I did your web developer and participated in your free mentoring 50 minutes and got a software developer job. Thank you so much. Hey, congratulations, Ricardo. Good job. You see, you just talk to Uncle Steph for 15 minutes and you get jobs. <laughs> uh, what's your future? What, what's your view of the future of front end? Uh, strong. Uh, strong is strong. Um, yeah. I, you know, it's not going anywhere, that's for sure. Hey, Steph, I just finished the hackathon. What a challenge. Yeah, very cool. Is a compiler a good portfolio project? I've never had an interview. I'm nervous about getting a job. Well, it depends. If you're going to, Michael, if you're going to do work where you're going to be creating compilers or doing similar types of coding, yeah, it would be a good project. But if you're going to be developing web apps, no. Uh, it's an okay project, but yeah, do it. You know, finish it, and then start looking at jobs. What do you think is the advantage of coding skills as a public school teacher? Hmm. Well, uh, that means you could teach code first of all. Uh, second of all, uh, you have a lot more options open to you as a developer, as a coder. There's no questions about that. Um, I know that coders will make a lot of money, so you might find yourself becoming a full-time developer at some point if you decide to leave teaching. Um, I think that coding is like a, it's just like a superpower. You know, my, by my life's experience, it's been super important to, to have learned how to code. It's made, made me a much more logical thinker. I've been, I'm able to, I believe I'm able to discern reality more clearly because I have a logical brain uh, because coding forced that. So, hey, how are you, Cesar? Should I have a good grasp on OOP before learning Swift? A good Swift course should teach you OOP um, while doing it. But if you're having trouble learning OOP, then take my Python course. I have a whole chapter on it, which will. Uh, will help you. And learning Python will make learning Swift like this. What are the most in-demand dev skills for the future? That I cannot predict uh, what 100% accuracy, but if I had to guess, it's going to be web-related technologies. Hello, hello, how are you? Uh, uh, are you still bullish long-term with Vue.js overreact? Um, I haven't looked at the latest data. I'm still bullish of Vue. I'm not suggesting it will replace React. I just thought it was going to be growing popularity, and apparently it has. But um, I don't have, um, I don't think it's going to replace React, no. Uh, is blockchain hot enough that it's worth learning or just stick to core web dev like PHP and MySQL? Depends on the jobs, man. Look at around, see what the jobs are, you know? Uh, continue, if you're using my studio web, I teach with the web because it's the most, gives you the most flexibility in terms of jobs, opportunities, and types of programming that you, that you can do. With web technologies, you can do web apps, front end, back end, you can do mobile. You can do desktop now with Microsoft Tech. So, are you really the 169 year old developer? I certainly am. I certainly am. What's going up? Hey guys, give me some thumbs there. Come on. <laughs> it's just good for the algorithms. Hey Kay, how are you? Thanks for your inspiration. Your course is fantastic. Hey, I appreciate that. Always the best. Uh, um, Testimonials are the live ones on the uh, on on the uh, on the live stream. So I appreciate that very much. Thank you. I'm glad you find the course useful. Hey Stefan, do you teach YAML? No, I want to learn it. I don't know what is it is laugh out loud, but I want to learn it because the job I do will use it for automation. Or should I learn Python? YAML. I forget off the top of my head what YAML is out of sudden. So let's let's check that up. There's so many technologies out there. Oh boy, there's so many technologies out there. Give me a second.
All right. Yamo. YAML is a human-readable data serialization language. It is commonly used for configuration files and in applications where data is being stored. Oh, YAML files. Okay, YAML targets many of the same communication applications as XML, of course, uh, but has a minimal syntax. Yeah, I haven't looked at YAML in many years, so. Okay, YAML is data serialization, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, okay, okay, YAML, I, I would categorize that in a, uh, so, it's, so it's, it's serializable, okay. Okay, YAML is something I would characterize as a need to nerd technology, so I wouldn't be too concerned about it. There we go. Uh, Oscar, uh, Oscar asks, how are you a 169-year-old developer um, through AI? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about quant developers? I'm a quant developer for a hedge fund. Do you think machine learning is the future for programmers? Hmm, I don't know much about quant development. Um, do you think machine learning is the future for programmers? Yeah, machine learning um, will not replace programmers for a long, long time. It might replace certain aspects, that's for sure. Uh, it, it might automate certain aspects, anything that requires pattern recognition. Uh, but beyond that, I wouldn't be too concerned about uh, that whole subject. I wouldn't be too concerned about uh, the machines replacing humans, you know, when, Call me when AI can properly drive a car, you know, or park a car. Th those are infinitely less complex tasks than writing code, and uh, they still can't do that, so it's years away. Uh, learn block dev. Okay, we got that one. Um, how are we doing for time? Here we're doing all right. For coding general websites for small businesses, etc. How many media queries, viewport sizes should be included? Or just have one for desktop and one for mobile? Um, you, you typically design for mobile. Mobile first is like the standard. And then what you do is you scale up to desktop. Um, and then you test based on, um, you might go check online, see what, what uh, screen sizes are being used today. I haven't checked in a while. And what you might do is also, when the site is up and live, you can check to see uh, what kind of, what the audience is using, right? What kind of browsers they're using, what type of computers, and adjust accordingly. Uh, generally speaking, if you, uh, if you design for mobile and desktop, um, you're pretty good, you're pretty good. All right, all right. Uh, can I get a job with just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? You could get an entry-level job with that, yeah, depending where you are. Hello, I'm an electrical engineering student and I want to get into software engineering. As of now, I have knowledge in Java and data structures. What do you think I should be my next step? Um, I would start trying to build things. I start trying, start trying to write practical software in uh, the specialization that uh, you like. Have you programmed in Ruby? Yes, I have, yes, I have. Are you a huge fan of Star Trek? I don't know, I wouldn't say so, it's hard to say. You never know. Double guns, right? Look at that. You're a nerd if you can do a single, but if you can do double, that's like major nerd skills. So you wonder, you asked, mm -hmm. Uh, I just finished a 42-hour hackathon. I didn't know how hard it would be. Uh, hey, sir, how to stay mo now that you finished your hackathon, Oscar? It's time to actually get some real work. Start start working. Hey, sir, how many? How to stay motivated during programming? Well, I talked about that in previous videos. Check out my previous catalog. I got like. I don't know how many videos I left live, 1,800 to 2,000. 
So you got quite a few to go through, but go through and talk about motivations. If you want to stay motivated, you should check out links below my course, Lizard Wizard. Lizard Wizard. This will help you with your motivation in a big way. Depending on what you want to do, and if you don't do nose average cover already in my eyes, okay. And I'll go Steph. Uh, I do your mental program for one hour a day. How long will it take me to get my first developer job? It's difficult to say, Dan, because I don't know your, your ability to absorb new knowledge and how quickly it gets there. Um, it's difficult to say. I think it takes uh, 99 hours, uh, I would argue, just to go through my basic web stacks courses, just to cover that. Um, and then from there, you're building your portfolio site, you're seeking out your first uh, freelance jobs. So, I don't know, 99 hours, an hour a day. So, uh, we're talking, you know, three to six months maybe. I have two questions. How likely is it to get your first job as a web developer without any degree within a reasonable time frame? Looking at web designers, HTML, email jobs. It's very, very, very common, very likely. You got to understand, most small businesses don't care what degree you have. Like the vast majority don't care. Medium-sized businesses won't care. The most important thing in software development is um, showing a portfolio, showing you that you have skills. That's the most important thing. Uh, so yeah, just keep working. Hey, Stefan, like the new mic. Hey, I appreciate it. I assume that the, uh, the sound is clear. So yeah. If you, if you ever wondered about shaving your head like I'm doing here, like I've done here. It's actually quite comfortable. It's very comfortable. I was letting my hair grow, but it was getting, I had to comb it and stuff. I just prefer this. I don't have to comb it anymore. It's fantastic. I save money. I don't have to buy shampoo anymore. So you may want to consider it. Um, Ham says, I have an associate's degree in CS, two-year college degree in US, but dropped out of bachelor's program. Can this give me any edge in job search? Currently doing self-taught web dev. Yeah, you know, just say you got a two years degree in, in uh, you know, just say I got my associate's degree. And then um, come, come in there when you're applying for jobs with a very strong portfolio. Check out previous videos where I talk about that. And then if they ask you why you dropped out of your bachelor's program, I don't know. I don't know why you dropped out, but just say, hey, I started working in the web dev or I didn't want to go into college debt. You know, just give them a reasonable reason. And it's, again, in the software development game, skills are so much are so much more important than a piece of paper. And what do I mean by piece of paper? I mean a degree. A front end or back end. It's easy to get jobs if you're doing back end. But front end could be very viable too. Another big YouTube channel and web dev said this past week that JavaScript will be gone next 10 years and .NET will replace it. Uh. <laughs> no. What do you think about skateboarding? It's cool. A lot of my friends, they, they used to skateboard. I never got into it for whatever reason. But why not? It's cool. How do you get over imposter syndrome as a junior developer? Write code, keep writing code with every bit of code that you uh, push the repo that works. With every project that you complete, it would just become easier and easier and easier. So just keep at it, man. Hey, Uncle Stefan, this is Sandy, a newbie. Hey, welcome to the stream, Sandy. <laughs> Ajin, you shaved your hair. Yes, I did. Did it myself, too. If I ever uh, decide to quit uh, being in the tech business, I can start cutting people's hair. Anthony says, I start my first position with a big tech company about a year ago, and I, f and I feel I landed in deep end. I feel I landed in deep, deep end. Before this, I did work with a student startup. How to know if it was this is normal or tough luck? I started my first video with a big tail. I'm not sure what you're asking me about the tough luck. Uh, 
I feel I landed in the deep end. What do you mean? Uh, the work is too hard for you? You gotta clarify for me. Good evening, good evening, Clayton. Uh, and, ah, right. Extend my greetings and salutations to Clayton. Uh, what do you think about PHP Future? Do you recommend it? Yeah, PHP is going nowhere. It is the most popular web, well, server-side programming language, period, by far and away. It is the most popular server-side programming language. It's not going anywhere. People have been talking about it dying for ages. doesn't age. Look how big my hands are. This is what happens when you code too much. Your hands just get huge. You develop huge hands, so be careful if you code a lot. <laughs> I just landed in my first the software developer job back in Java. Thanks for all your help. What should I do to prepare and level up my skills? Well, congratulations on getting a job, by the way, Darnell. Uh, back in Java, huh? very good. Uh, I'm glad I was able to help. What I would suggest that you do is, once you get in there, um, figure out the type of Java that they're doing. I don't know what type of Java. I don't know if you're working on Spring or uh, BEA. I'm not sure. But whatever you happen to be doing, and then bone up in that area. In the meantime, look on the link below. If you haven't gotten already, get that refactoring book, the Java refactoring book by uh, Martin Fowl, I think it is. Um, it is one of the seminal books, one of the key books, one of the only books I've kept from way back 20 years ago. And uh, that's the book you should read and learn refactoring if you haven't already. That will really help you out there. Hi there. So what do you think about Facebook changing to Meta? I've discussed that. I think I put out a video on that. I put a video out on that. So you can go watch that video uh, just a couple days ago. Is GraphQL worth learning? Only if there's work in it. Only if there's work in it. What's more valuable for a portfolio? More small projects or one big? Ah, depends on the type of job you're looking for. If you're looking to work on big jobs and a big project in a portfolio would be good. If you're looking to work for a small, medium-sized business, many small projects. Uh, okay. Hey, go, Steph. I'm transitioning from accounting to software development within the finance department I work in. I'm a self-taught programmer. Any advice to accelerate the process? Yeah, just start writing. You know, if you've done my web development package, so you've done the uh, HTML5, the CSS, the JavaScript, the Python, the PHP, uh, etc. Um, when you've done all those basics then I would, uh, that would mean you have a solid understanding of the fundamental concepts and technique. And then I would just go in there and start, start writing code, start trying to automate processes, start, start trying to add value. Uh, web development or mobile application developments? Uh, there's, more, there's more opportunity in web, but mobile is also really good too, so either is good. Hello, Lottie. How are you? Cheers. Hey, Steph. I suck at math. Join the club. Do you think that it will hurt me in the long run when I'm trying to be a full-stack developer? Absolutely not. Full-stack development has this much to do with math. I'm not making an evil symbol here. That's zero. It has nothing to do with math, um, except for add, subtract, occasional multiply divide. Uh, that's about it. Uh, full stack developer has nothing to do with algorithms. Uh, practically nothing anyway. Has practically nothing to do with data structures except for the basics. Arrays and uh, hashes and lists and so on. So yeah, don't worry about it. I'm having a, such a hard time with JavaScript. Well, that's normal when you're learning how to write code for the first time, it can be difficult. I don't know what course you're using. Sounds like you're not using mine. If you're using mine, uh, it will be a lot easier, trust me. Um, yeah, just keep at it. Write code, that's the most important. Even if you don't understand the code, write the code. Write the code, write the code. I got into coding to get girls, doesn't, to be work doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> 
Well, um, yeah, we'd have to come up with like a Patreon to do uh, to do that to do those discussions. Um, do my lizard wizard course. That will help you with the. I will help you with the ladies. Do you think outsourcing is a threat to the U.S. EU developers? Uh, no. Working on becoming a developer and going all in, but why would a company hire a dev for 100k if a foreign dev can do the same job for 10? Well, sometimes they will. Sometimes they will, but a lot of times, uh, because of cultural and language issues, it's just a lot easier to hire local. And you just look at the market now. The demand for uh, dev developers in North America and in Europe just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up and up, despite the fact there's international markets. The demand for developers is outpacing the need by a, a long, long time. Hey, it's the man, it's the myth, the 169-year-old legend. Let's all give Steph a triple thumbs. Hey, triple thumbs are good. I like that. What do you think of my new lens? Pretty cool. The bokeh game is not nearly as good with this lens, but uh, it gives me a, a wide perspective. Anyway. What do you think of crypto? I think it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, you know, it keeps going up. I have no idea where it's, what's going to happen with it. Um, the, my crypto, I thought it was nuts. But clearly my opinion is wrong about that. So at this point in time, just be careful if you jump into crypto. Just be very careful because you can make a fortune quickly with it. It's, that's clear. So, you know, maybe put 1% of your investment cash into some crypto speculation. Maybe you'll catch a wave. Like, uh, was that... Uh, that latest coin that went up 44,000% in um, just a few days, but apparently people are having trouble selling out of it. Um, it's difficult. Listen, yeah, I have my Bitcoin story where uh, when Bitcoins were five cents a piece, four cents a piece, I was trying to buy a ton of, I was trying to buy it, and I just had such a hard time, and I gave up like a schnook. Never give up, and uh, I was gonna put a thousand US into a Bitcoin, whatever, when it was four cents. Today, my Bitcoins would be worth like whatever, $4 billion or something, some astronomical amount. There's two rules in about investments that I learned. Uh, never sell and uh, never put too much money in any particular investment so you'll never feel a need to sell And because uh, you never know what's going to happen. So that was something, you know, I didn't invent that rule. Buffett told us about this you know, decades ago, and I never listened like an idiot. Um, but if I would have listened to Buffett, I would have put like a tiny bit of money into crypto, into Bitcoin at four or five cents, thousand bucks. I would have kept, just hold on to it, don't sell. And today I'd be like uh, one of the billionaires. So learn from my mistakes. When you invest, take a small little slice, put it into something and then forget about it and see what happens over the next seven years. It's boring. It's boring, but that's how you're going to make your huge gains. Hey, hey, Troy. How are you, man? I'm doing pretty good. All right. What do we got here? How are we doing for time? All right. Wow. All right. 148, 150 people. Cool, cool. I appreciate the thumbs, guys, when you give them. Uh, we have a huge problem. Oh, here we go. Wind design. We have a huge problem finding clients for, web for website design. Normal paying clients. Everybody makes... WordPress tutorials do affiliate marketing, sell courses. Maybe we can't live from uh, your pit. We can't live from WordPress. I don't know, man. I, I people in my mentoring group, they all they can get is all, all they can, they not all they can get. They have they have all these WordPress gigs. I don't know why you're not able to find people I know. Just like, it's unlimited WordPress gigs. It's it's crazy. Uh, can you please compare front-end frameworks and make a front-end path video? Yeah, that might be an interesting video. Yeah. I think I've done them in the past, but maybe a new one would make sense. Nikolai Valentin Dinka. Hello from Romania. Hey, how are you, man? I have learned for 15 years web design to do websites in WordPress, Joomla, templates, and page builder, and I've done five projects so far. Okay. Uh, uh, what's a good, 
pay range for senior software engineer position. Depends where you live. Depends where you live. Um, I know in some places it could be a hundred grand, other places it could be a quarter million. Also depends on your skills. Uh, China uses Vue. Oh, there you go. Clients on Upwork want to be web designers and web developers. Is it good to leave web design and start UX design career path? You know, you have to see where the market takes you, Nikolai. Um, yeah, everybody um, has different experiences, I find. Uh, you know, you have to just figure that out, what works for you. But the web is this, like, the most diverse. Uh, what's, being a, what's being QA? It's a shame. I don't know. Hey, Stefan, I'm learning DSA. Do we need to master all the sorting algos in the interview? Depends on the company. Depends on the company. You try, try to find some research in terms of what the company is doing. Hey, Joshua, how are you, man? New York City. Love your videos. Have the opportunity to drop my nine to five for a coding boot camp. I'm excited, but a bit nervous. Any advice of getting over imposter syndrome and choosing the right boot camp? Um, be careful to boot camps, um, but also check out my mentoring program. You might find that it's far more affordable, far more flexible, and very, very effective. Check that out. Uh, in terms of choosing boot camps, uh, make sure that they have experienced developers and not you know i've heard from several people that they go to boot camp and the teacher just graduated from the boot camp six months ago so you got to be careful about that um yeah what's your halloween costume <laughs> uh, none uh, live long and prosper indeed indeed it's actually code long and prosper here by the way uh, does learning C++ data structures, algorithms make you a better developer? No, and give you a better understanding of JavaScript. Will help you with your JavaScript a little bit, surely, but the key to understanding any particular language is understanding its environment, if you will. So if you're doing front-end JavaScript, you have to understand the web browser and the, uh, uh, the DOM structure and the document object model. That is uh, what you're going to be operating upon with your JavaScript. Uh, but it will help. Listen, when you learn to program in C, and you learn data structures, you learn algos, they are, they're universal. These are universal constructs of, lang of programming. It's cool, but you find that it's not going to really help. In terms of direct web developer help, no. It's, it'll help a bit. It'll help a bit. It doesn't hurt. It will definitely help, but... There's other things you can do will be far more impactful. Should I learn how to use Git ASAP? Started three weeks ago learning CSS. Greetings from Chile. Well, not necessarily yet. You can start maybe exploring it when you need to take a break from coding. Start exploring Git a little bit. Why not? Uh, let's see how we're doing. All right. How important do you think is having a bachelor's degree in recruiter's decision to move forward with an interview? Eh, it depends on the job. Depends on the job. I've talked about this quite a bit. Uh, thoughts on Agile BA and Agile UX. I don't know what Agile BA is or Agile UX. I know what UX is, but Agile UX, I would have to look in it. Yeah, YAML is like JSON. But JSON is the de facto standard for um, information exchange these days. So I'd probably, you know, it's easier, easy to learn. So when if it comes up, you learn it, you know. Will I be able to get a career going with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? You can get, you can start with that, but if you can throw in a little back end with a little PHP or a little Python, you will up your probabilities of getting a job like quite a bit, and also your pay will go up quite a bit. So start with your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and then do some server-side coding. That will help a lot. How are we doing here? All right, thanks for the thumbs, guys. Hey, Stefan, I have an offer to a well-paying job as a Flutter developer. Ah, very cool, congrats. Uh, I'm still relatively new to Flutter, but I have experienced in, an have experience in Android, which is good. Would being a solo developer slow down my growth as a dev? Not necessarily, you know, 
you know, it depends. Do you, so are you asking me, do you take the job or not? If it's well paying, uh, do you like the company? Do you like the type of work that they're doing? You know, just because you take a job, it's not like you're getting married. You know, you can take the job, and well, even marriage, you can get a divorce. You can take the job, and after six months, you don't like it, you quit. You've made some money, and uh, you've got some experience, and you can move on. So it depends. Uh, do you have a lot of gigs now? Do you have a lot of jobs now, or are, are you struggling for money? That's also another factor. Working within a team could help a bit, but the web, there's so much information out there now with the web, right? There's so much, you know, these streams like mine and so on. You know, you, you can get, a, you know, the key to becoming a better developer is, just to, is to develop, to write code. It's like fighting. You know, the key to, I used to do a lot of martial arts. I did it for a long time, uh, decades. And I learned from my own experience and when I would teach people, I would say, tell people, it just one sparring session, full contact sparring session, is worth months of training outside the ring in terms of raising your skills. Same thing with development, you know. Uh, as you write more and more code, as you build more and more things, your skills will just increase. So, you know, don't worry about, so whether you're doing that in a team environment or solo, you know, there's different, different things. With the team environment, you learn to work with the team. Uh, you'll probably be exposed to team-based tool sets you know, uh, you know, in terms of handling repos and uh, and uh, being forced into a particular f structure that you that's required when you have a team, you know. So I think both are good routes. What development says, I want to say thank you for helping us. Hey, no problem. Thanks for joining the stream and letting people know. I do this because it's it's as much my hobby as anything else. I enjoy what I do. That's why I'm doing it Saturday night. Hello, uh, are there huge machines in the factory program C, C++, or has it, or has it placed with machines? Uh, depends on the machine, man. Uh, it's probably C. A lot of it is probably C. Who knows, you know? Yeah, most often used as the extension of routing files. Yeah, yeah. Are there any companies that value web scraping as a skill and will hire based on that? Very few, very few. It's just an example of, uh, that's a, such a specialized uh, type of coding, right? Maybe if you're working for a search engine or something. But yeah, listen, the more you know, the better, you know? Uh, f for me, social behaviors is 50% of any d job. Social, I'm not sure. I know what you mean by that, social behaviors. I mean, social behavior. If I understand what Mu, Musin is trying to say, I hope I said that right. Um, yeah, your interpersonal skills is going to have a huge impact, huge impact in terms of uh, your success or failure at a job, you know? All right. Uh, laugh out loud. All right. Uh, hi, Steph. I took your web dev course some months ago. I'm proud to say that I've been working as a web developer for a startup a couple of months now. Congrats, dude. Congrats, dude. I appreciate it. You see, when people do my web dev course, they get jobs. They don't get caught in tutorial hell. They get jobs. That's good. Congratulations, Thomas. Uh, thanks. I'm happy for you, and thanks for letting me know. Cool. Keep at it. Keep up the good work. JavaScript is so hard, but I am not to quit. No, no, don't quit. Don't quit. Can't fail. Uncle Steph, what is your favorite video game of all time? Oh, that's a hard question. That's a hard question. I would have to say my favorite shooter of all time is Halo. It's got to be Halo. Favorite shooter of all time. Now, video game? That's difficult to say because there's so many great games. I used to love playing the original Masters of Orion. That was, I don't know if you guys know that game. Played that a long time ago. Uh, that could be, it's right up there. But, you know, so when I was a kid, I used to play Atari games like Asteroids and Space Invaders, you know. Those are also good. Joust, that was good. Do you think interning at a gaming company would deliver the best experience of coding concepts for a novice programmer? Why or why not? 
Depends on what they have you do, man. Depends on what they have you do. Depends on your, what you're looking to do. But give it a go. Can't hurt. Hey, Oscar, how are you? Hey, Stefan, what makes a successful API? Uh, one that works. <laughs> one that works. Um, yeah. One that is not buggy. Uh, are you talking commercially? I don't know. It's a broad question. Generally, it is really hard to get a back-end developer job or over front end if you're just entering the job market. Is it harder to get a back-end? No, I, it's, it's, it's actually easier, ironically, I would say, to get a back-end job because it's more in demand than a pure front-end developer. Um, that's from my experience. Um, I, as I say, I, I, there's a reason why in the st Studio Web curriculum, my curriculum, thanks below, thanks below. There's a reason why in my curriculum I teach uh, full stack. It just opens up a lot of possibilities. Um, extended consciousness and documentation compatible. What? <laughs> uh, is mobile app development going to go extinct? No. No, 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 no. Ah, listening to Caravan Sarai by Santana. Pretty good ambient music. One of the best albums ever. I have that album in, um, in vinyl, in Japanese vinyl, no less. I love that album. Great album. Yes, resistance is futile. How are we doing for time? Well, almost an hour. Okay. Is learning Spring Boot worth it if you want to work in startups? Ooh, probably not. I think startups, generally speaking, would be going for more nimble, loosely typed languages like uh, JavaScript, Node, uh, I don't know, whatever. Python, Django, Flask, um, PHP, you know. It wouldn't hurt, but you know. Yeah, I appreciate the thumbs up, guys. If you get the thumbs up, it tells the Googles everything's cool here. Uh, is it better to specialize in either front or back end or learn full stack? I'm scared of being a jack of all trades. Well, full stack is a very, very in-demand skill set in of itself. So, again, in all my videos, what I teach, learn the fundamentals, get your foot in the door, doing a few small little projects, and then the market will tell you what you have to specialize in after, afterwards. All right. Hey, how are you, Jam Encoder? Hey, Steph, how should I calculate how much I charge for small freelancing projects, automation, web scraping with Python? I'm afraid of overcharging due to that I undercharge frequently. Uh, you should take my um, freelance course where I get into, um, I get into that. Yeah, t here's a general rule. When you're first starting out, and in the freelance course, I teach you how to refine your, tech, your skill to be able to assess jobs besides a whole bunch of other things. That being said, if you're first starting out, since you already know that you have a, uh, you undercharge a lot, take your, look at your previous projects where you're undercharged, figure out how much you undercharge by in percentage terms, and then multiply your next bid accordingly, if that makes sense. Have you read Dune? What an incredible book. Incredible book. I hope the movie won't disappoint. I actually read part of Dune. I, for whatever reason, I never finished it. It's a great book, though. Um, I did see the original movie back in the day, which you know has its good and its bad parts. I hear the new one is a visual extravaganza. In fact, I'm going to go see it in IMAX, uh, probably Monday or Tuesday. The theater's right here, in fact. And um, yeah, apparently, visually, this movie is is like Lawrence of Arabia, so I highly, recommend, I highly recommend, based on the reviews, I haven't seen it myself, but based on reviews, if you like cinematography. What about the semantic web, seeing a future in that field? Well, everything's kind of semantic these days, especially with the rise of AI, now we're talking about automatic ontology learning. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of baked into the cake now, semantic web was big like 10 years ago or so. 
Do we, we kind of do it now, right? AI machine learning, what's the, what's the basic difference? Which to choose to start with, AI or machine learning? Um, I'm not a specialist in either of those. Uh, I just have a superficial knowledge. Um, so I couldn't tell you off the top of my head uh, what the distinction between AI machine learning. I always think of them as being one package. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of specializations in the field. Um, you know, just go, go to TensorFlow and Google and start working with that, you know. Which one to focus, SQL or no SQL? I'm learning Python, web, backend, DB model, should I focus? You're gonna find a lot more work with SQL-based systems, as far as I know, still to the day. Yes, sir, I was clear. How do, how do you maintain your knowledge? How do you grow as a developer? Write code and write code, read articles, write code. Where did you get your hoodie from? I don't know, I forget. It's a big name place, I just forget. I'll mention the next stream if I remember. Crimea, Crimea is Kosovo. All right, we're getting into stuff. KD, I just saw do 20, not bad. Part two, hopefully on its way. How was the visuals, Mr. Bunny or Madame Bunny? Uh, I'm curious, how did you find the visuals? Hey Steph, I'm not gonna call you uncle as I think it, I might be older than you. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Greetings. You have a great name there, uh, Mr. Kudla. Hey Steph, I have a project that I want to monetize, but I am not sure where to put where to put on production. Is Heroku a good idea? Should I use Docker or Git lab pipelines? C I C D I didn't write test no types. I think when you're first starting out it doesn't really matter, you know. Um as long as the uh, the provider is able to, you know, is able to host the technology stack that you're leveraging, and just take it from there. I wouldn't be too worried initially uh, in terms of load and so forth. Just make sure they, my, my only advice is if you call tech support, call tech support and make sure they answer. What about game development industry programming? Does, uh, I think it's so tough to get in. Yeah, that's uh, it's a tough nut, I would imagine. Tougher web is easier because gaming is more is very there's not nearly as many gaming jobs, far fewer, and because gaming is perceived as being fun, a lot more people jump into the gaming industry. All right, guys, that's it. Done in almost an hour. We're gonna finish off the stream. See if there's any one or two questions. Do you think a boot camp that teaches Ruby is worth it? Is that a joke? <laughs> it depends on the boot camp. It depends on the level of the quality of the teachers and so on and so forth. For junior stack role, what should I know? JavaScript, medium sized company. For junior, full stack role. Well, new, there's no, um, okay, so, so, you know, if they're doing, find out what they use in the company and learn that, you know. That being said, you should be able to, to build a, uh, a full stack web app, a simple one at least, to get in. Mm. Sell your ETH, air ether. Do I need a degree to get a full stack job? No. Sandy, I'm nine weeks in a front end boot camp and I just purchased your program. Ah, very cool. Yeah, just jump into it. I recommend 20 minutes a day to start and you'll see you'll start, all these concepts will start making sense for you and that will speed up your whole learning process. Thanks for picking up my package. Cheers. All right. Oof, so many more questions. But alas, I must go. Awesome visuals. Happy Halloween. Oh, yes. Do you have, do you have your own dojo? Uh, not for martial, not for uh, martial arts, no. Hello, greetings from Montreal. Ah, very good. A question for you. I understand English, but well, but I am not very comfortable. Can we count on your help if we are stuck on some questions? Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no problem. You'll be fine. I teach people uh, where English is their second language. You should be fine, but yeah, I'm always reachable. What class would you recommend first? Start with HTML. Uh, awesome live sessions. Hope we see you again. Yeah, thanks for joining the stream. All right, guys. <laughs> Ruby is king. So, 
appreciate you doing the stream and uh, thanks for the thumbs up. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll see you soon. Double guns. Cheers. Oh, we'll end up. We'll end up with my uh, my music here. Where's my music going? That's not going. What's going on here? All right, guys. See ya.